So, so Luna, I, first, know, uh, I like your red phone. Thank you. Yeah, that's like my <laughs> emergency phone. I need to call. <laughs> it's like a bad phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to talk to you about because I, I mean I know we got to see you for you know a period here in in the in the Powerverse, which is like the new uh, hood MCU kind of so to speak. <laughs> but I mean, we also got to see a lot of you in Dexter, a lot of you in um, in um, in New York Undercover. And and I, I just feel like you've done a lot of uh, crime story uh, TV and that you should be kind of honored for all the projects that you've been able to put in. Um, how do you feel about the, the change in, in times from when you was doing the series New York Undercover to now and how streaming services has changed? Just as an actor, like how has the landscape changed for you in these projects? Well, I mean, for me as an as an actor, there are definitely more opportunities, right? Because like when New York Undercover came out, it was like, whoa, we've never seen this before, right? This show with these two leads, one's Latino, one's African-American, and the girl comes in and they're heroes, right? We It was not the usual primetime show that we saw. And I think that we see a lot more of that now i mean yeah. a lot more and all different types of genres so that's a really really great thing and with streaming and all of that there's so many more opportunities for actors um i mean you can sometimes people will say something like whatever happened to that actor or what and i'm like they're somewhere they could be anywhere there's so many <laughs> streaming <laughs> um services that you never know you know you'll hear that some somebody that you haven't seen in 10 years has been working for a couple of years on on this show or something um in in some ways it's like i feel this i don't want to say that there's too much content because of course we want to work right as actors but i think it's hard sometimes to find to land on something when you it's like an embarrassment of riches sort of yeah and i, I was first introduced to you with uh i like it like that and I know you did Cosby Mysteries after that before New York mm -hmm. Undercover. Um, but you know what what many people don't ever kind of acknowledge is that Andre Harrell was a big part of New York Undercover and that Dick Wolf, who we all know for all the law and orders, kind of like cut his teeth in a long running series with New York Undercover. Like how how monumental was that series? I mean, it was different. I always remember how it started with this music montage and showing the stuff like like how important was that series to lay in the groundwork for even now power, you know, power ghost and everything else? I mean, it was really unique for all those reasons that you that you said, right? And and it was the number one show in Black and Latino households for the first three seasons before it became something else that nobody watched for half a season and then ultimately was canceled. Uh, I mean, you never saw this. You never saw, you know, a, a father with his son. He's a cop, but he's got this whole life, right? His his uh, fiance was a lawyer, was like in a different world, and they were trying to sort of make it work. You know, you have that with JC. You have Eddie, who's got his father, who's you know a good man, a recovering addict, and and he's a cop. They're all like, it's really very complex full fully realized characters and i think that was something that people were starving for really needed you know um at the time and for that alone it was groundbreaking and then all of the music um that that, that component of the music video in the beginning to tell the story and then natalie's which we had so i mean it's unbelievable the amount of people who came through Natalie's. And that was one of the best parts of the show to me. And, and that was almost, it was an honor to have those artists. And I think they felt that it was an honor to be part of the show, something that was groundbreaking. And I think it's laid, you know, it was really the blueprint for a lot of stuff that we're seeing now. I know it says that you're born in Brooklyn and, and you know, live or resided in Queens or grew up in Queens. 
But, uh, you know, just as somebody else that was born in, in, in BK, like, which one do you really claim? Do you, I mean, do, are you, do you really claim, are you bipolar? Do you claim both of them? <laughs> uh, are, you, are you a Brooklyn girl or a Queens girl? What is, what's going you on? You know, sometimes I feel really Brooklyn, but the truth is, I'm a beach girl. I'm Caribbean. So Rockaway Beach, which is in Queens, the beach is right there. And that's what I grew up with. We went to the beach every day when the weather was reasonable. I mean, I'm one of eight. So my mom, it was like, you know, bampa la playa. We're going to the beach. The after school, we went to the beach. And the weekends, the whole family would come. So I'm I'm pretty hardcore Rockaway Beach, which is Queens. <laughs> <laughs> and, and speaking of the difference that changes, I mean, I, I know that you know, it was it, that that New York undercover was was in the culture, and that Dexter was talked about a lot. But being in the power verse is, is very heavily social media trending. It's in Black Twitter. People talk about it all the time. How's the effect of having a show that you see? Uh, I don't know how 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 much you monitor this stuff, but that you see is like so much a part of like this social media culture and people are talking about it and talking about the leaks or talking about whatever every week with this show and you could like kind of monitor it whereas as an actor like before you might not have been able to see what the the world was thinking about it okay i'm going to be completely honest with you i'm stuck in time i'm not that person that's on social media i post sometimes but as far as being aware of the chatter like on Twitter or Facebook or whatever I'm not I'm I I just don't ever really see it I'm not on those things I'm on Instagram uh because I love taking pictures but um what I get more is like an energy about it believe it or not and I can feel um, the excitement about it and what's happening. And actually seeing the episodes, like when I saw the episode where the Castillos are, you know, taken out, that just, that really blew me away. It really did. And I could feel the impact that I think it's going to have. So, yeah. you know, it's a much more visceral thing for me, you know, watching the show. And, and also rewinding back, I, I know that, you know, uh, Bill Cosby personally has had all his personal problems and and he's a fallen star but there's been so many people that either on the Cosby show or you with Cosby Mysteries I spoke to Mark Hamill yesterday and he was on the Bill Cosby show first that was his first thing it, like how important it was like all you know all of those things that open up these doors for actors that we're seeing you know years and decades later um for that era that that all of these shows that was created um with you know i mean like how important was do you think that just that as a as a creator was that to all of these actors that we see now today so are you asking how important the shows then at that time were that i, I mean that, that influenced the actors that are out there bill, now bill you know bill cosby away from his his personal okay. accusations and, and convictions and everything else that that happened like just those shows that like you know i it's just it's just you know weird i spoke to mark hamill yesterday he talked about the bill cosby show and i know that you did i like it like that before uh mm -hmm. before the cosby mysteries but that was like one of your first projects and it's just interesting to see so many great actors that we are seeing today you know started in this kind of cosby sphere or whatever you know it's just how important was those productions to um you know, laying the groundwork and opening doors for so many actors today. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah, it's funny. I hadn't thought about the Cosby mysteries in such a long, I just, I mean, I thought about it obviously when all this stuff was, was going on, but that's an interesting question because I do remember uh, just being in awe, being on set, um, working with him it was my my first real experience of working with such a big star and somebody who had created at this point such a already such a body of work and a, a, and what we already you know then it was already a legacy that he was leaving um it was an honor honestly to be on the show at that point and just be part of something thinking wow this is like a genuine uh, star and he was very, um, 
who's very generous, you know, working on the show. And I I really appreciated that because it was he was somebody that I I looked up to. And I think at that time, all of these shows, we needed all of the representation that we could find. It's really what kept us going. They're like stepping stones, you know, to keep moving on on the path uh, of being a creative and just um, being an artist, you know, in this in this business. So I'm actually, you know, proud of all the shows that I did back then because they all led to this now. And yeah. so many people now, so many opportunities, so many wonderful actors. It's like, wow. It's it's really something. And uh, aside from power, you also have the sequel to In the Spider-Verse coming out. Mm -hmm. And all these years, I, I don't see any other animations on uh, on your in your resume, but you picked one of my what is one of my favorite Marvel movies, period. The you know, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse to, to be a part of. Like, how does it feel to like be a part of that? Be a part of power, like all these things are like kind of like the biggest things going on in this part of the summer right now. Everybody's talking about power. Everybody's excited about Into the Spider Verse. Um, but how, how does it feel to be like just in this mix and doing your thing and being present in this era? You know, it feels so good. It feels really good because some, you know, I sometimes you don't think about it in those terms when you when you get the gig it's just like wow this is really cool and you know when they asked me oh do you want to do you know something with Mary J I was like what um yes <laughs> and that was like a no-brainer and for that to grow into something else is uh, was just so exciting you know and so Spider-Man it was kind of the same thing they were like oh Miles Morales and I was like wow an Afro-Latino Spider-Man uh Boy, paja. Yeah, I'm in, like, of course. So it's a really nice a surge of energy and all of it coming out at the same time in the summer is um, is really cool. That's cool. Well, well, we're sorry to see your your end and, and the power verse, but we're glad to have you within the series. And, and, you know, the way these things splinter off, who knows, they might do like a whole other chapter about you and tell your backstory, you know, one day. So we might not see the end of you now, even though it's in this, this, in this chapter of it. And um, thank you for your time and everything. I loved you in Dexter. I, I, I loved, loved you in New York Undercover. Like I, I, I can't get over that. And, <laughs> and I love you in spite of her. So all the stuff you got coming out, I'm going to claim you for Brooklyn. And, you know, I'm going <laughs> right, to keep right. away. And, 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 you know, you always be, my homie, I appreciate you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, thank you.